Hey guys, MTG Noob here on planeswalkerslibrary.com. Head over there and check them out. We are up to the part that you probably care most about, which is the multicolored. Hang on to your hats because there are a lot of these and it's going to take me a little bit of time, so I'll try to go through it quickly, but no promises. The throat is getting a little bit sore over here. It sounds like I've been smoking for 200 years, but uh, more or less, let's get into it. Okay, I've also just realized that my audio was turned down a little, so I apologize if in the last videos I sounded like a baby mouse. Alright, here we go. Let's do this thing. Alms Beast, forecasting cost, rare, 2, white, black, 6-6. Six, six. Creatures blocking or blocked by Alms Beast have lifelink. Alright, I think when you throw down a 6-6 six, six for 4-4 four, four, for 4 mana, they can have some lifelink. Uh, it sucks if they like giant growth their guy and trade with this and gain six life, but I think bashing through is is very nice and a six six is going to be hard hard to deal with. All right, so I think uh, not constructive worthy really, but definitely a bomb and limited. He's going to be powerful. You'll see. You'll see. All right, we have an angel. We also have a very good card under our angel that is related. Two mythics for the price of one. Alright, so Aurelia the War Leader costs six, two, double red, double white, hike, three, four, mythic, legendary creature, angel, uh, flying, vigilance, haste, nice, wish she had first strike. Uh, when this card attacks, for the first time each turn, untap all creatures you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. So she more or less gets to swing twice herself and any other creatures that you have on the bottom. This is going to be really broken if you have really good battalion guys. So you'll go like swing with team, battalion triggers on the stack untap battalion triggers on the stack again assuming your guys don't die so very very sexy but you know I mean what could you do can't mess with angels sometimes this is the card that is my in my opinion so far 90 cards in uh, this card is probably the best card in the set X red vite instant mythic Aurelius Fury. Aurelius Fury deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. Tap each creature dealt damage this way. Players dealt damage this way. Can't cast non-creature spells this turn. What? There was too many words on this card. <laughs> it's kill spell. It's fireball. It's a tap all your dudes down. It's a... I hate you control, go F yourself. It's everything, all in one. So just like just try to trade for this card or buy this card or uh you know, more or less try to open it at your pre release and then just sit there and smile as people turn to skeletons because you have the best card in the in the in the in the format. I think it will be found speaking outside of just limited, obviously first pick, definitely playing it in your in your pool if you open it, I would assume, as long as you can support it. Uh I think it will see play in like Naya decks and Boros decks and any decks that could uh splash both red and white. Good card overall. Solid. Solid. Alright, Biovisionary. This card's quirky. Costs one green blue. Creature, human wizard. Rarity, rare. At the beginning of the end step, if you control control four or more creatures named Biovisionary, you win the game. Two three. <clears throat> You're allowed four in your deck, right? But did you realize that if you clone it with cack Cackling Counterpart, Clone, Phantasmal Image, any of the sorts, then uh, you can have more than one that way. Get four, and you win. Seems good to me. Okay, back. Sorry about that. I uh, I became Borborigemos enraged because my throat hurts, and then I had to get a cough drop. Uh, this guy, 7-6 for 8 costs four double red double green for a legendary cyclope or cyclops at mythic whenever this card deals combat damage 
to a player, reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the rest into your graveyard. So when he hits, you look at the top three cards, you take lands to your hand. And the reason that's good is because if you discard a land, he deals three damage to target creature or player. Very sexy. You sexy beast, you. Or you sexy cyclops, I should say. You're going to play him. He's a 7-6 Strampler. He wins games on his own. He just goes bolt, bolt, bolt. Kill all your guys. Swing in. Kill you. He does things. Good in Reanimator, possibly. Boar Rose Charm. On uh, the mtgnoob.com, I posted a thread. Go visit our forums. And I posted a WTF Boros Charm because Boros Charm is very good. Uh, choose one. Well, first, let's choose what it does first. It's an instant, uncommon, red and white. Choose one. Boros Charm deals four damage to target player. Very good in Boros. Closes out the game. Or, permanents you control are indestructible this turn. Very good in Boros, because it makes you uh, immune to sweepers outside of Terminate. Terminus. Or, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Very good in many decks, especially like Naya. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, this Thrag Test just hit you for 10 to the face. That's half your life total, because I gave it double strike. Boros Charm, might as well call it Broken Charm. Call of the Night Wing. I covered this one in uh, an old spoiler video, so I'll go through it quickly. Two blue, black, put a 1-1 one, one black, horror, black, blue horror creature onto the battlefield with flying. It's a sorcery at uncommon. It has cipher. So throw it on a creature. You might be making some more 1-1 one, one flying black horrors. I wish it was instant because then it would at least be used as a combat trick. I'm not big on this card. I think it's okay. Uh, not amazing. Not one of my favorite cipher defines. Clan Defiance. Here's another good X spell. X, red, green. Choose one or more. Clan Defiance deals X damage to target creature with flying. Clan Defiance deals X damage to target creature without flying. Or Clan Defiance deals X damage to target uh, player. Choose one or more. So, you can choose all three of these modes as long as they're legal. I could kill a ground guy, I could kill a flyer, and I could burn you to the face. Uh, I'll take that any day of the week. Thanks. Consuming at, oh, it's rare by the way, which makes it less good because at uncommon it would have been stupid good. But now it's, it's still good, it's just going to be harder to get. Okay, consuming aberration. Nom, 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 nom. Looks like something from an alien movie. Um, like Aliens, the movie. Uh, three, blue, black, cost five for a star, star, which means that its power and toughness are equal to something that we'll find out. Creature type horror, rare. Consuming Aberration's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyard. Seems good to me. Creatures you cast... Whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals a card from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a land card, then puts those cards into his or her library. So, you play this, let's say it's a 4-4, a 2-2, a 3-3. Next turn you cast another spell. You mill them a bunch, it grows. Very sweet deal. Only problem with that is it has no evasion whatsoever. But usually things that become ridiculously big are good enough for me. Also, you're actually having an alternate win condition built into this guy because as you do these things, you are milling. So keep that in mind that you might be milling away their good cards etc etc just be careful that you don't end up having this guy and they have some way to remove the graveyard death pact angel mythic creature type angel casting cost three white black black so six five five angel that flies obviously when death pack angel dies put a one one white and black cleric creature token onto the battlefield it has casting cost of the angel tap Sacrifice this creature, return a card named Death Pack Angel from your graveyard to the battlefield. So more or less, this card is undying. You just got to work for it a little bit. Got to protect your little uh, token that comes into play. Uh, you're going to win if you play this card and you can protect it. 
and you can keep recurring it. So I like this card. I think it's very good. I love the art. Angels with sickles, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you would definitely play this if you're Orzoth, and you would be happy to have it. Dimmer Charm, Demir Charm, excuse me. I think I almost called it Dinner Charm. I must be hungry at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Blue, black, instant, uncommon. Choose one. Counter target sorcery spell, or destroy target creature with power 2 or less, or look at the top 3 cards of target player's library. Then put one back and the rest into that player's graveyard. All three modes are relevant. The charms are very, very good this time around. You thought last time the charms were good. I think these charms are ma actually even stronger. This will see play in all formats, I believe. Um, there's always relevant sorcery spells that you want to counter in blue and black. Killing things, even if they have two power. There's so many two power or less things that you want to kill. And fate sealing somebody to see, to seal out the game is really good as you're milling them as well. Here's our second planeswalker. Give me a second. I'm gonna pause. Sorry about that. Been talking a lot. Uh, also a little under the weather. I apologize. Domrirad. One green. Excuse me. One red green. Cost three. Three mana planeswalker. Yes, that's correct with three loyalty points. Sound like the count from Sesame Street. Planeswalker. Damari. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, you may reveal it. Put it into your hand. Plus one. Okay, so you plus one it. It allows you to draw a creature card potentially. Okay. Two. Or minus two. Target creature you control fights another target creature. This is essentially prey upon on a reusable source, so to speak. Um, could be good, could be good. And minus seven. You get an emblem with creatures you control have double strike, trample, hexproof, and haste. I don't think this guy's amazing. I think he's an okay planeswalker. I think if you're in green and red, you will have bigger guys, so the fight mechanic will be relevant. Um, he'll be better in 40 card formats, draft and, and sealed, because you have more opportunity to hit a creature uh, since you have less cards. And his minus 7 ability is really nice that it gives hexproof and all that other stuff, double strike. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think it will be relevant from time to time. Let's move on. <clears throat> Drake Wing Crossus. One green blue cost three for a lizard drake and it is a common for a 3-1 flying trample I like this guy nothing wrong with a leaping lizard 3-1 um, flyer with trample sure sign me up for three you would play a 3-1 flyer without trample uh, so I don't think there's a reason to not play a 3-1 flyer with trample Okay, let's talk about our uh, guild mage up in here. Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. Blue Black. Uncommon. Human Wizard. First ability. One blue black. Whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere this turn, that player loses one life. Eh, you know. It's going to be okay. Closes out the game if they're low enough. But let's combine it with its secondary ability. Target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So you have mill on a stick, you also have drain on a stick, so you can mill for two and possibly drain for two. Um, <clears throat> it's a 2-2. Two -two. I don't think you would ever not play a guild mage, although this one uh, doesn't seem to be the strongest in my opinion, but it's still very, very good, especially if you're playing this um, and you are able to kill off a few of their dudes and just drain their life. And remember, you can drain life multiple times for one creature, which makes it very, very good if you're able to do that. Okay, you can pay the ability more than once. Same thing for here. Oops, apologize about that. Wanted to get it close up, up close and personal. All right, elusive crisis. I can't. Crace, yeah, cra crisis. I think. One green blue cost three for a fish mutant. I don't want to hang out in the water where these things are growing. There's obviously Mr. Burns has been uh, throwing some waste in there. Uh, you got an uncommon for a zero four. 
This card is unblockable. This card has Evolve on it. This card is very good. This card, make me a fish mutant. That's what I say if I'm going to be this go good. A zero four unblockable sucks. Evolve makes this card very good because it has zero power. So most likely a lot of your guys, if not all of your guys, are going to trigger this at least once, probably multiple times. So you're probably going to have a 3-6 unblockable guy. 3-7, uh, excuse me. I don't think there's anything that you would ever want more in your life if you were a fish mutant, is to grow up and be very powerful and unblockable. Phantom Mage, 1-1 one, one for rare usually is crappy. Two, green, blue, cost four. Human wizard, evolve. Whenever a 1-1 one, one counter is placed on this phantom mage, you may draw a card. This is going to take some work. It's going to come in as a 1-1. One, one. It's not going to do anything. It's going to be a, uh, a lightning rod for removal or direct damage. You'll play a dude, you'll draw a card, which will be very good. If you can move counters off of this, then this card will be very, very, very good. How many varies? Three varies. That's how good it will be. But to be determined if there's any way to, other than the guild mage, to move counters around, really, uh, you know, make this card very, very broken. Fire main Avenger, 3-3. Three, three. Battalion, 2 red, white, cost 4 for a rare angel. Flying Battalion, whenever Fire Main Avenger and at least two other creatures attack, this deals three damage to target creature or player and you gain three life. This card is very good. Uh, it's a nicely casted flyer. Costed, I should say. That's what I meant. Uh, it costs about the right thing you would want for a 3-3 three, three flyer, but it has a, a very relevant ability. Putting Lightning Helix on a dude is very sexy and saucy. Okay, let's talk about one of the champions here. <clears throat> I'm not big on this guy, but maybe you are. Cost 6, 4, white, red for Foundry Champion. Creature Psych, Elemental Soldier for a rare. When this card enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of creatures you control. So, He's dealing one damage to something. If you have more creatures, he's dealing more damage to something. He's very good with some sort of cloud shift, restoration angel, blinking concept. But, eh, not great outside of that. He does get to buff himself for white and red. Red buffs his power. White buffs his booty. I think he's okay. I would more or less always play this card. I would probably first pick them unless there's really good removal in the pack or something that we haven't seen in the yet the set yet so I play him I don't really love him though Gore Clan Rampager this is probably one of the best uncommons in the set uh, it is two green red beast uncommon trample for a 4-4 four, four. that's an upgrade to like so much like power curve wise it's just like it's just like, wait, what? The power creep just... What? 4-4 four, four, trample for 4? Sign me up. Oh, wait, I have a blood rush ability where I pay half of my casting costs to give something 4-4 four, four and trample. Yeah, all right. Th thanks, R&D. You are making our game all about the creatures. How can I pass this up? I would never... I, I would most likely always first pick this. It's probably also going to be relevant in standard if you're in a very aggressive gruel slash naya build where you would want a good creature and a very powerful uncounterable pump spell <clears throat> ground assault man that's effed up he just like threw a rock at this dragon what a jerky cyclops man <laughs> red green sorcery uncommon Ground Assault deals damage to target creature you uh, equal to the number of lands you control. So apparently, you just pick up a giant rock and throw it at your creature of choice, and hopefully you have enough lands to kill it. This is a good card, definitely playable, nice removal spell. Uh, at least it does two damage, at most it does as many lands as you have in play, which is really nice. Should be able to kill some good stuff with this. <clears throat> I call this the uptight white guy. High Priest of Penance. One white, one black. 
rare human cleric for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever this card is dealt damage, you may destroy target non-land permanent. So, you essentially want this guy to die and kill things. Uh, good news is, he's probably never going to die. <laughs> so, that's good because you will bash in with him and probably get in a point repeatedly. Uh, the bad thing about that is, when they they get to choose what permanent you get to kill, essentially. So if I'm holding a bomb in hand, you know, you better hold on to this guy if you think they got something better to drop, and then kill him when, the, when they play their bomb. Alright, uh, this, this guy looks very shady. He looks like he does some unacceptable societal things. He is Lazava, La, Lazva, <laughs> Demir Mastermind. Um, he is double blue, double black. Costs uh, four. He's a legendary creature. He's a shapeshifter. He has hexproof, and he's a 3 3. So a 3 3 hexproof is pretty good. Whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may have this card become a copy of that creature, except its name is still Lazav Demir Mastermind. It's legendary in addition to its other types, and it gains hexproof and this ability. So he more or less can, when you kill stuff, he becomes better if you want him to be. So I like that a lot. Um, I don't think he's amazing at Mythic, but, you know, there's some fun stuff that you could probably do with him. And I heard that he's a pretty, going to be a pretty good commander general. Oh no, is that the mind grind? Ah, uh, my head has many electric impulses going through it, and I look like I'm going to, uh, you know, do that thing that Neo from the Matrix did at the end of Matrix, where he, like, was like, oh, I, I understand the Matrix better, and, and, and he blew up Agent Smith, and, like, he was like, blah, blah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so, X, blue, black, for a rare sorcery, mind grind. It just sounds like it's going to be the next, like, effin' Gondam style. Do the mind grind. Each opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals X land cards, then puts all cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard. X can't be zero, because that would be really good. So you mill them, and, uh, you know, they got to reveal X land cards, which is going to be pretty nice, I think. I think I like this card. I think if that happened to my head, I'd probably take a Tylenol and then call it a night. But uh, I think this is a good card. It's definitely a bomb in Draft Unlimited, since you have a finite amount usually of lands, and milling is usually much stronger in those formats. Mystic Genesis, which is somewhat like Mystic Snake, uh, costs one more. Uh, it's an instant. It is two green blue blue so it costs five for a rare counter target spell put an xx green ooze creature token onto the battlefield where x is that spells converted mana cost so it's really expensive for a rare counter spell you'll probably play it in limited but i highly doubt you'll play it in constructed i could be wrong countering something and then getting a dude out of the deal is very very good but uh, it seems expensive to me. Okay, one of my favorite cards in the set. Obsidat Ghost Council. So this is Ghost Dad 2.0. One double white, double black, cost five. It's a 5-5 five, five mythic legendary creature spirit advisor. And whenever this card comes into play, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile this card. If you do, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of your next upkeep. It gains haste. So, <clears throat> let's talk about this. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart about this. Comes into play. You lose two, I gain two. It's my end step. I remove it. It's protected. It's my upkeep. Comes into play. You lose two, I gain two. That's a four-point life shift, which is really an eight-point life shift. 
And now I have a 5-5 five, five Haster that I can swing in on. I can also then protect it again and keep doing this. Now, if they have a removal spell, you're sad. If they don't, you're basically going to win this game. I just, I don't know what to say. But this is a very, very solid card. Overall, great design. Love it. Okay, here's another Mythic. Prime Speaker Zagana. Two. Two green, two blue. Legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. It's a 1-1 to start with. Prime Speaker Zagana enters the battlefield with X-1-1 counters. <coughs> Sorry, I knew that was going to happen. That's why I was talking like uh, I was just learning how to read, <laughs> which I've been pretty much talking the whole spoiler alert, so apparently I've been having to sneeze this whole time. Um, because, uh, enters the battlefield with X-1-1 counters on it, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. When this card enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. So let's say you play this after you have a Thrag Tusk in play, so to speak, in like a Bant list. You would get it, it would become a 6-6, six, six, and you would draw 6 cards. That seems very, very nice. I, I like. I'm a big fan of it. I also like the art. Dressing up like a peacock is always pretty fun. It's like, who wouldn't want to do that? Um, and I, I think it's good. I don't think it's great, but I think it's definitely playable in, you know, the limited formats. And I can see it maybe being a one of in, in a band control list. Rubble, Hulk, Smash... Okay, <laughs> you do that, Rebel Hulk. Uh, four, red, green, cost six, creature, elemental, rare. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control, so at six, it's probably going to be at least a six six unless you cheat it into play early. But the Blood Rush thing is pretty important. Discard this card, target attacking creature gets XX until end of turn where X is the number of lands you control. So pretty versatile combat trick. Half the cost seems pretty nice of them to do that. Um, more or less you're going to be kicking some butt with this guy whether you play him he'll grow each turn for you every time you'll have a land so it'll be nice or you could discard him to just kind of get in there for some big game damage. <clears throat> Let's continue. Shamble Shark. 2 1 for 2. Green and white. Uh, excuse me, green and blue. It has flash. It's a fish crab. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, it's a common and it has evolve. The good thing about this is it also triggers other creatures evolve at instant speed and it evolves itself, which is pretty nice. So if you get multiple evolve guys going, uh, it may work to your benefit, but this guy is a good blocker. He's also a good attacker, and you can probably like flash him in end of, end of turn and then evolve him to a 3 2 and then start beating with him, which would be really nice. Signal the Clans! Rare. I don't think you're going to be too happy with this, but let's find out. Uh, red, green for an instant. Search your library for three creature cards and reveal them. If you reveal three cards with different names, choose one of them at random and put that card into your hand. Shuffle the rest into your library. So it's a tutor for creatures, which is which is pretty nice. Um, the reason I said I don't think you're going to be too happy is who wouldn't want to just take all three cards and just be super greedy? <laughs> but uh, it does give you some versatility. You can't pick similar named cards or the same name cards because then it won't trigger so make sure you don't make that mistake and it does do a lot of things in different formats it lets you search for a combo piece creature it lets you search up your bomb so I think it's versatile it being a rare makes me a little uh, sad because I'm not gonna probably play it in formats that it's amazing but you know is what it is alright let's look at this guy What's this guy all about? He's a guild mage. Scrog guild mage. Uh, red, green. Creature type human shaman for an uncommon 2-2, two -two, just like all of them. Uh, creatures you control gain trample until end of turn for red and green. Very nice. I like that ability. Target land 
you control becomes a 4-4 elemental creature until end of turn. It's still land. Let me repeat that. Turn 1, you play a dork. Turn 2, you play this guy. Turn 3, you activate a land and swing for 7 or 8, depending on what dork you played on turn 1. That's a pretty good beating right there. I think that's fantastic. You can make multiple lands, and later on you can make multiple lands have trample with all your mana. So, um, the thing about that that I just said, which is incorrect, I apologize, that would have to be turn four, because the land on turn three would be tapped. So I guess they were like, some crazy guy's going to think this is really good. Uh, slightly worse, but still good. Um, so you need four mana, essentially, to do this ability and make it really good. So I'm sorry for misleading you into a bonkers start. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 listen, I want to have some fun once in a while. All right, I like this card a lot. Um, first off, it's a three casting cost, two, two flyer, which is fair. A little harder to cast, but it has haste. So a flying haster is very nice. Sky Knight Legionnaire, one, one red, one white, human knight, two, two flying haste. Not much to say about it. I think this will come out of nowhere and, and try to win games for you. Saw Gnome Guild Mage. 2-2, two, two, red, white, human wizard, uncommon. Pay one, black, green, red. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Pay one, red, white. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So he can buff himself and other creatures plus one multiple times. Pay two, white, red. Put a 1-1, one, one, red, white, soldier, creature, token with haste onto the battlefield. Uh, not too thrilled about that, but when you think about it, if you scooch out a little 1-1 one, one guy with haste, you're swinging for 3 with him, um, you're also able to eventually then buff your 1-1s one, to 2-1s, one which is very nice. So I think he's good, I think he'll serve a purpose and do well. Treasury Thrall, 4, white, black, cost 6, creature type, throw, rareness, rare, extort, whenever this creature attacks, you may return target artifact, creature, or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. It's a 4-4. Four, four. I think he's a good dude. He looks like he's a hard worker. He's got some gold on his back, blinging it out. Um, I think that swinging with him and getting things back is going to be really, really nice, especially if something that you were using earlier got blown up. Um, I think being a 4-4 four, for four, 6 might not be good enough, but I would still play this always. Urban Ev Evolution. Cost 5, 3, blue, green. Sorcery. Uncommon. Draw 3 cards. You may play an additional land this turn. Nothing to see here, kids. You're going to be playing this card if you're playing those colors. Drawing 3 cards is always good. Doing it at sorcery speed kind of sucks, but getting to play an extra mana, which you'll probably draw off of that uh, 3 cards, is nice. It helps you speed ahead and refill your grip a little. I think you'll be playing this. I don't think it's going to be seen in any constructed decks because I don't think the control decks really want to tap out for that card and then let a 5 drop or a 6 drop uh, resolve. Viscopa Confessor, 1-3 three for 5, 3 white black, human cleric, uncommon, extort. When this card enters the battlefield, pay any amount of life. Target opponent reveals that many cards from his or her hand. You choose one of them and exile it. I think this is going to be good. I can see you playing it. I don't know how good it's going to be, but late game it's going to obviously be better. When it comes into play, you'll have to just pay two life and you'll get their best card. You'll get information from their hand, and he also has extort, so he kind of will be like, all right, all right, pay some life up front, I'll get you later. Can you spot me some life right now, and then I'll get you later. So I think he's going to be okay. I think in the slow grinding extort decks, he'll be fine. Whispering Madness. Shh, I have a secret to tell you. <laughs> Two, blue, black, sorcery. Each player discards his or her hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. Cost uh, four, it's a rare, and it has cipher on it. Uh, I don't know how good this is going to be. If you're the mill deck, though, it's going to be very good. It's going to be a 
a way to refill your hand. I would play it definitely in limited. I don't know how good it's going to be constructed. This is one of those harder ones to figure out. So any opinions are always welcome on a card like this. Guild Mage of the Zamic type. Blue, green, elf wizard. Uncommon. 2-2. Two, two. This turn, each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. Not very sexy for Evolve, but very sexy for buffing your guys. Remove a 1-1 one, one counter from a creature you control. Draw a card. I think, in my opinion so far, I could be wrong, this is the best guild mage spoiled. I mean, being able to pay 4 mana and making your dudes come in with 2-2 two, two counters with plus with two two one one counters is really good drawing cards is very good playing around with evolve is very good i think this guy's gonna really be strong and it's gonna take some finessing but i think he's gonna be like wow i didn't realize this guy was so good and now he's so good and i want him all the time okay how about this zertois swine three red Green cost five for a common boar creature. Look at him, he wants that food. That's why he's hitting it with his tusks. <laughs> Greedy little boar. Five four for five is fine. You paid that when you played uh Golgari uh Daddy Long Legs. But the fact that he has the blood rush ability is really, really good. Giving something plus five plus four till end of turn is gonna be very strong in limited. Not gonna see constructive play, but pretty saucy. Alright, that concludes our gold card edition. I know it was very, very long. Uh, my voice is tired, but I'm going to tough through. We're going to bring you the hybrids next and the lands together. Thanks for watching. Once again, check out our sponsor, planeswalkerslibrary.com. Check out our site, themtgnoob.com. And if you have any comments about anything, go post some noise in our forums. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.